Welcome everybody. We are today at the Cincinnati VMUG. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Ken Nalbone. Did I say that right? You did. Amazing. Ken, please introduce yourself. You know how these goes. Sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Ken Nalbone. I've been involved uh, with the VMUG community, well, for several years, just as an attendee. I've been leading the VMUG in Indianapolis for a little over a year now. And uh, in my day job, I'm a solutions architect for a reseller doing infrastructure architecture. That's pretty cool. I didn't know it was only a year that you have been the VMUG leader. Yeah, I, I contacted the guys in Indianapolis. I heard about uh, them expressing interest in recruiting new leaders at early 2016. Um, around May or June of that year, I decided to you know, throw my hat in the ring because I had always enjoyed attending and figured, well, I don't want to see this thing die. I'd like to see it continue, so I'll do whatever I can to help out. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that well, they became VMware employees, and so they were probably technically not really supposed to be leading anymore, mm -hmm. and that would just kind of leave me holding the bag after the fact, but it all worked out well. It's been a great experience, so I've really enjoyed it. All right. Were you a V-Expert before that? I was not. I have not been a V-Expert until amazing. just I, I, recently. I felt like you've been in the V community for a long time. I've been a lurker for a long time, okay. and not really necessarily involving myself as much as I have been within the past year or so. That's very cool. Okay, so you know the drill. I always love to start to tell people how do you start? How did you, how did you get into IT? Well, um, I definitely developed an interest in computers when I was a kid. I'm part of that generation that came of age the same time as the technology that we all enjoy today. So I remember the time before it. I grew up with it, wanted to adopt it. When I was in high school, I didn't have the luxury of going to a school that had many like, you know, computer programming or technology classes. I was afraid to declare computer science as a major going into college, thinking okay. that I'd be too far behind. Um, you know, I came to realize after I did a few programming classes as my minor, after doing business management as my major for a few years, that I really had a knack for this. I, I switched majors and graduated with a double major in computer information systems and business administration since I already had so many business classes under my belt. So what did you go in for? Business management. Business, and then you basically, that's, that's a great combination, right? Yeah, there. it works really well. Mm -hmm. It's a combination that has served me well. and. I, after that, I, I went to grad school because there was a bit of a recession going on. It was right after the dot-com bubble burst in the early 2000s. Uh, and rather than looking for a job, I figured I'd stay uh, Have you always lived in Indy? No. Uh, I moved around a lot, a lot of times. We moved eight times before I graduated high school. So I've lived in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, uh, a little bit in California, just all over. Mm -hmm. so, and yet, when, when you graduated, where did you look for a job? Um, when I graduated, I just kind of worked my connections to find whatever I could. Uh, you know, I went to a, a grad program that thankfully uh, was really high on networking, the people kind of networking. So that's a skill that we learned, and there were a lot of connections to work. I found a, my first job is basically a sysadmin mm -hmm. um, at a school in Kentucky, uh, okay. higher education. Uh, I really was not qualified for that job looking back, but they gave me a shot and I learned a lot on the job. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the people there. Now, I moved back to Indy when back, I had the chance. Looking back at that, do you think it was your attitude and your willingness to learn and stuff like that that sold you? Or? It must have been. <laughs> it must have. Yeah. Because I, I, I hear a lot from people saying, you know what, if, I, if they had the right attitude, if they had the right hunger, if they're not a jerk, I can probably teach them. That's right. So. And that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have looked for as well. I dipped my toes in the management water a mm -hmm. bit at one point in my career and I would you know kind of screen employees along with the uh, director of IT at one of my jobs and because I would be the direct supervisor of them and it was that attitude of not the guy who knows everything maybe a little experience you know maybe it's kind of shallow but in some of the areas where we do things but also what how do they come across personality wise do we think that they have the aptitude to learn and that they're passionate about the job. Mm -hmm. And that's what really counts more than whatever technology skills gaps exist. Okay, so, sorry for taking you on the side there. No, that's So fine. your first job was an admin in, in a college in Kentucky. That's right. You learned a lot. How, how long did you last there? Or how, why did you leave? Uh, uh, well, I was there about a year and a half and then one of my friends, one of those connections from grad school that I was talking about, told me about a position at his organization in Indianapolis. And I wanted to move back there. That's where I had a lot of friends and knew everybody and knew the town. Okay. And so I made my way back up there. And I stuck with that company for a really long time, actually 11 years, which is basically an eternity in IT. But that company almost doubled in size during the time I was there. So I got to learn a lot and grow professionally. What, what company was? What, 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 what did what It was did a financial do? services okay. company. And they had several business units. So they had a little bit of everything going on in the financial services world. Were you doing 
a sysadmin job as well? Yeah. Because so 11 years, you probably did a bunch of stuff. I did a bunch of stuff. I mean, I came on as network administrator, but it was not a large enough network to do just networking. It, every job I have had up until my most recent one has basically been some form of system administration without actually having the title system okay. administrator. Mm -hmm. but yes. It's a little bit of everything. So you said you did a little management? Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Uh, it was after a few years working at that financial services company, I said, you know, this is good, but I need a little bit more career growth. I told my boss about that. Uh, with the way the company was expanding, we had one HQ, but our other offices were growing. One in particular, I said, here on the other side of Indianapolis, we need an IT presence. Let me work out of there. Give me an employee. He can basically be the first line support. I'll back him up, and I'll continue doing my system administration type duties. And he bought in. Cool. And so I did that uh, for a couple of years. That guy got so good at his job, took on system administration duties, he was more of a peer to me at one point, so at that point he was no longer my direct report, he was a peer. I started just managing some of the other guys that were first line support help desk guys. I discovered that, you know, I don't really have a passion for managing people, maybe, maybe a team of people that are more on the same page of me, but when it comes to kind of the roles that a director of IT is responsible for, it's, it's not where my passion lies, so I kind of got out of that and just went straight to just back to just regular engineering and administration after that. Yeah, I actually went through that and I Did found you? out management pays more, but my phone always was ringing. I always had to look at it. That's right. And when I came back to tech to adjust the tech role, I was like, this is heaven. Yes. Yeah. You, you get to Machine, do more of the things Machines you do what I tell them. <laughs> people, uh, you never know. <laughs> I, I, I love people as mm -hmm. long as, you know, we just are, you know, peers and having conversations. Yes. When I, when I have to get on somebody and make sure they're doing their job and yeah. take care of basic tasks. That's just not really that's fun. That herding cats and stuff is not Exactly. Fun. Yeah. All right. And, and after that, what you did? After uh, which So one? 11 years in the financial services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What made you change? Uh, like I said, they were growing for a long time while I was there. So I did feel like I had personal and professional growth. But after about year 10, it started to level off and I felt like I was stagnating and I needed something new. So I just brushed up on my resume, polished it off, and uh, kind of explored getting new certs. I didn't actually end up getting any new certs before I found a job. I was just kind of in the process. And I, I found a job as a, a system administrator. Again, the, the title was infrastructure engineer, but basically the same kinds of tasks at a service provider. Nice. So That's, that's a quite a different environment, though. It was a, a quite different environment. I learned a lot. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But man, the, the um, requirements for being on 24-7, yeah. even more so than in a financial services company where you know the stock market's only open certain hours a day. Uh, it, it, it took a toll a bit, you know, in terms of, you know, just my stress levels and things like that. As much as I liked the work I was doing and I liked my coworkers, I felt like maybe it's time to step out of IT operations. I've been in this long enough. I've learned a lot. I haven't learned everything. You never do. Mm -hmm. But uh, I felt like maybe I want to look at a kind of a different career path. So I am these days, as I said, working at a reseller doing uh, infrastructure architecture. So I don't own an infrastructure anymore. There are certain things I miss about it, but the overall changes in quality of life have been worth the change, in my opinion. I don't see myself going back anytime soon. I made the jump to a vendor recently, mm -hmm. and what I, one thing I found is, first of all, there's, there's a lot of information, but it's really nice to be trained and have the, tr the time to be trained and stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it, it's, a, it's a very different pace, right? When you don't own an infrastructure, when something's not going to go wrong on Saturday mm -hmm. night and ruin your night. So Your deadlines are making sure that you're closing a deal at this point as opposed to, you know, getting the system back up. Yeah. You still, there's still a certain kind of pressure. It's a different kind of pressure and it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not anything that's unmanageable. Cool. So tell me, you know, we've talked about, about a lot of stuff. You mentioned some good tidbits of knowledge for people watching. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your, like, career, like, and, and, and I, I think that in, in the V community, we all stress that we should not be afraid of change and we should embrace change. And Absolutely. You, and you basically have told a lot of cases for it. What uh, other career tidbits do you want to leave in the recording? Um, always be trying something new. Always volunteer to do something that's outside of your wheelhouse. That's how you grow. Mm -hmm. That's how you show value to the organization and to your peers. And always just be willing to step up and do what's asked of you or what's not even asked of you to be the volunteer that says, I'll do that because it will get you opportunities, it will get you noticed, it 
um, it will help you just learn things. And overall, just it benefits the organization and the people that you work with. Okay. And finally, just, just to end on a, on, a, on a fun note, tell me about how you're leading the Cincinnati VMUG today. <laughs> yeah. So um, the, the VMUG leaders here in Cincinnati, Tim Smith and Mark May, that many people may know, um, both got called away for personal emergencies of one nature or the other. And uh, Tim called me up yesterday. He knew I would be in town. I was visiting a customer near here yesterday and said, would you be willing to you know, do the announcements and, and introduce our speakers and things tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Why not? No, it's cool. It's, and it's also cool that we have this, this uh, you know, network of trust. And you mentioned networking in the beginning. The VXPR program, the V community, it's also a network of trust. And everybody you know, reaches out on Twitter and says, hey, you know, can you help me with this or that? Mm -hmm. it's, it's very cool to see that happening today. And I, I thought it was fun to highlight. Yeah, cool. OK, so to close it up, tell me how can people reach you? What's your web page? I really want to show a sticker that... <laughs> sure, go ahead. Yeah, grab it. Uh, I am on Twitter, at Ken Nalbone. I'm fairly active on there. I recently res registered my domain and have started blogging on fullstackkengineer.com. Cool. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Ariel.